Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. And in this episode, we see if we can restore 40 year old plastic. Mainly these pieces for the GPZ 1100, this guy right here. Not that we're anywhere near, I'm just tired of looking at these old dingy pieces of plastic. And I wanna see if you can actually use a cheap Harbor Freight heat gun, or any heat gun for that matter, to make these black again. Stay with us. So you guys may or may not have heard about this witchcraft to where you can use a heat gun to make these black again. Well, we're gonna find out if it's true in this episode of Motorcycle Rewind. These are the, the mirrors, obviously. This is the little uh, headlight cover, and then the rest of it, and this actually goes right there, and the rest of the, the body panel. So you can see it's pretty faded, it's pretty rough. Will it work? I don't, I have my doubts, but what we're gonna do first is go ahead and clean these up really good, and, and then start, because what I don't want is heat up to heat up this plastic and soak all that into it. So I wanna get this as clean as I can. And I'm gonna take this guy, these guys outside, hose them off, and I'll be back with you guys in just a second with some clean parts. Okay guys, here are the pieces now that they've been cleaned. And you may be saying, well Eric, why do you need to clean these up or brighten these up or blacken these up, whatever it's called, uh, to restore the, bla the black in it because they look good. That'll all change as it dries. That'll all change and we'll get back. You can already see this one is starting to gray because it's starting to dry up. This one too, the same way. So we'll let, we'll let these dry before we get started on it. This guy is still, still has water in it, but there it's drying up. And we'll see as it dries and I'll show you that. GoPro, stop recording. Now you guys probably have another question is, why are you restoring the mirrors and the fairing trim on a motorcycle that doesn't even run? Well, I cleaned up the shop yesterday and when I moved these pieces around to organize everything, they were just all dirty and I said I can't deal with this anymore because I couldn't deal with the mess in the shop and so, I kind of don't like picking up stuff and getting dirty when you shouldn't, you shouldn't, right? If you clean them, they're ready to go and they'll be ready to go. And I said, well, let's, let's just see if we can make this plastic black again. You can start, you can really start to see how it's going back to, to what it was. There's still some water in there, but we scrubbed these pretty good. So we'll get back to you in just a second when they're fully dried. And then we'll start seeing if this witchcraft works. Okay, we're gonna start with this little piece, see if it actually makes a difference. See if it works. Well, it's starting to turn black. So you just have to be careful not to distort the part by getting it too hot in one spot. I have the heat gun on high because I don't know what I'm doing. Let me know in the comments down below if there's a if you've done this in the past and what's worked. By the by the time we finish all this, we may have a a better course of action of how to do it, but I'm gonna let it cool and see what it looks like, but we're gonna keep going. I mean, that does look better just in the, the short period of time. And guys, I am using the cheap heat gun from Harbor Freight. So we'll keep going at it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. The one thing I have noticed in the, in the short bit of time, and you can see it as it's starting to go away, I think if you heat it up till it gets shiny, see how it's dull again? You heat it up till it's shiny, I think then it smooths the surface back out. So, like it'll, what you'll see it right here. I'll heat it up a little bit, 
it'll get there. But if you go till it gets shiny, see how now it's it's got kind of reflective. You don't want to go too far, but you want to go till it's it's shiny. I think you got to be careful because if you go too far past shiny, it goes to distorted, and I can imagine it'll it'll change shape. Pretty crazy. I'm just gonna make sure that it still fits over here. And the good thing is that if you do heat it up, you can mold it, you know, if you will, if, if you need to, especially something that's going together. If something's already mounted, like these mirrors, we're not gonna have to worry about it. We will have to worry about it with this because that can get distorted just applying heat to it. So I think when we get to doing this one, it'll be like spot welding, right? You do a little here, you do a little here, you do a little here, just so you're not starting from here and working your way all the way around and it distorts all the way across. At least that's my thought. I've done it for exactly this long. So let's keep going. This is a really good winter project because you got a heater right here. pretty good. I'm just going to wipe it with this sponge, just the same sponge I used to clean it with, just to kind of cool it a little bit, see what it looks like. And then we'll wipe the whole thing. It is, it is hot, just so you know. Like I said, be a perfect winter project. Yeah, this is the back side. That's the front side. Now, just to keep in mind, just so we don't forget, it used to look like that. I think it works. Is it perfect? No, but is it a million times better than what it was before without having to paint it? Yeah. I'd take that for a win. Let's do these mirrors and then we'll get on to the big bad boy. Okay, so we got the final mirror to do. Flip these guys cool and get to the last one. This big bad boy. Let's see if we can make a difference. And again on this one, like I said before, because it's so big, I think I'm gonna bounce around just till I get it all done just so I'm not, I don't warp it. That's what I want to make sure of. The one thing I have noticed in my vast experience, right, is um, you don't want to hang out in one spot too long. And you want to keep your, your heat gun moving. Even if you're staying in one spot, you want to keep it in one spot. You just don't want to lock in. And you can vary the the intensity by even just pulling it away. So you can see it once it starts, it kind of moves, uh, moves pretty quick. Again, I'm gonna bounce around, not just to be safe, just so I don't warp the whole thing, giving it a chance to cool off over there. Kind of like the same approach you take when you're doing body panels on a car and your spot welding. At least that's my thought. I don't I don't know if it if it's a thing, but it seems like it could be a thing. It's a science thing, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a science guy. Let me know down below if I need to be worrying about this. Move over here. Corners like this are kind of tricky because if you come at it this way, you're getting too hot around. You got to make sure to get the, not distort the sides while you're trying to cook in there to get the middle. I think that's probably the, the biggest, biggest takeaway so far. First off is that it's, it's crazy that it works. Second is um, you're going to want to take it slow. Just take your time doing this. Because if you go too much in one area, you get in a rush, trying to get too close, you're just gonna, you'll blow through the plastic and you'll destroy the piece. Okay, so here are all the, the pieces. 
you can see they look considerably better than they did before. Now, I did on this side, I did apply a little bit of this uh, mud tire gel. Just kind of wanted to see what it looked like. I'm going to wipe it off, but I only did this side. So I'm going to do both sides and all of these just to kind of protect these. I would say that using the heat gun to restore 40-year-old plastic is something that, that works. And because these are going to sit on the shelf waiting for the, the project to be finished. But that was pretty quick and easy. But that looks considerably better. Let me wipe this off. Again, I didn't put much. This applicator pad stays in the Ziploc bag, so it stays wet. So there's always some on it. But that does look considerably better from where we came from. So guys, I don't know about you, but this stuff seemed to work, right? It, it brought, uh, made the plastic blacker than what it was prior. And then all we did was put a little bit of mud tire gel on it just to um, protect it a little bit more. But that looks pretty darn good. Now I just walked around over here looking to see where else could we use it on? What else could we use it on? Obviously we could do, we could do the mirrors on this GPZ because they're plastic. That would work. The, the bezels on this, it would work because they're plastic. So I could probably try it on those if I pull my Speedo off. Everything else except for uh, these gauges are plastic but they're in good shape these aren't as it aren't in as good a shape so maybe we'll pull those off and we can do it and then the other only other ones would be these on the cb450 i could probably do this knob on the uh on the dream i wonder if let's find out okay let me just wipe this off really good it's not super faded. It is faded, but I'd like to see if we clean it up a little bit. That's it dry. Yeah, probably a different kind of plastic. It doesn't seem to be responding at all. Yeah, we're getting nothing. It's hot. It just Different kind of plastic was used in, in the early 60s. Yeah, it's not responding at all. Maybe this isn't even plastic. It's plastic. But it didn't do anything. It wasn't even like... Maybe it just has to be a certain type of plastic. Hey, maybe we learned something with this. Maybe it doesn't work on all plastics. It definitely didn't look like it was doing anything on this dampener knob. Nothing at all. Look, you can still see the steam coming off of it. It did uh, nothing. So guys, there you have it. Witchcraft works. Harbor Freight heat gun, some old plastic, not too old a plastic we've discovered. 40-year-old uh, plastic, 60-year-old uh, plastic I don't think works. 40-year-old uh, plastic works. So guys, thanks for watching yet another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. And do me a favor, like, tag, share, and follow us on Instagram at Motorcycle Rewind and go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And while you're in the subscribing mood, wander on over to our friends, Brick House Builds, Gold Guy, Moto Mango, Ace Cafe Bikes, Mile Zero Racers, Plan B Motos, and Pete's Classic Cycle, and Lady Moto Bang, and give those guys a subscribe too. Thanks again, guys, and have a great day. Oh, guys, look. Go get some stickers. Click the link down below after you hit the subscribe button. Click the link down below and pick up some stickers. We have the Motorcycle Hauler, Motorcycle Rewind, the logo, GPZ, deserves his own sticker, and Yoda to honor our old late friend Howard on his little Allstate 125. If you're still here, click on that video. Click on that video right there, or is, it may be right there, or this one right here. Just watch another one.